It's time for Health Futures with Cypress Home Care Solutions, Bob Roth. This is Arizona's only show dedicated to providing you with expert advice on how to live a longer, healthier, and happier life. To learn more, call 602-264-8009. That's 602-264-8009. Now, here's your host, Bob Roth. Good afternoon. You're listening to Health Futures, and I'm your host, Bob Roth, and it must be Friday. And if you are just tuning in for the very, very first time, our show is about how our older adult population can live a healthier, happier life. And how do we do this? We bring extraordinary guests. And today's no different. I want to jump into this because our entire segment today is talking about skin cancer and dermatology and everything associated with the skin. And for those that don't know this, it's the biggest organ in the body, the skin, the epidermis. And how do I do this? I, I'm bringing two phenomenal guests here on the show right now. And then later on, I'm going to bring another doctor on, Dr. Patel. But today, right now, I want to introduce to you Dr. Dustin Mullins. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. And I've got Dr. Andrew Newman. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, Bob Roth. Yeah. Well, it's good to have you. And if you guys are both okay, can I refer to you as Dustin? Absolutely. And you as Andrew? Certainly. Perfect. Well, we live here in the Valley of the Sun. And the sun does wonders for us to get vitamin D. And I know that's something that my doctor tells me I don't get enough of, so I do a little bit of supplements. But uh, at the same time, it has a lot of harmful, damaging characteristics to the sun. So, uh, you know, I, I want to talk about skin cancer, preventing yourself from getting cancer, and you guys are with Affiliated Dermatology. You guys are surgeons, so you see a lot of the stuff that's going out there. So I'm going to toss the baton over to you, Dustin. Tell, okay. me, tell me what's going on out there. Okay, so to, to answer your, your question uh, in regards to skin cancer prevention, you know, for skin cancer prevention, this is a lifelong strategy, and it begins in childhood. And that starts with having sun protective clothing, avoiding the sun at the peak hours of the day. That's typically between 10 and tw- uh, 2 o'clock in the afternoon. We typically say if you, can, if you can't see your shadow, then run. That usually means the sun's at its high point, and that's when it's strongest. Um, wearing sunscreen with an SPF 30 or greater, it's a broad spectrum coverage that's going to protect from the sun aging and skin cancer causing rays call, uh, called UVA and UVB and getting your annual skin examinations. Um, In the Arizona area, uh, we have a a greater risk of skin cancer due to the higher UV index. Uh, Our geographic location places us at a higher risk, and therefore we typically recommend that individuals begin getting their skin examinations at a much younger age. So the prevention starts early. That's with your skin checks, your skin prevention, sun protective behaviors, and education. You know, I, I didn't say this at the top of the show, but these fine surgeons are here with me today, and uh, they are going to be with me again next Wednesday. So on Wednesday, the 25th, from 1 to 2 o'clock at the JCC, and that's the Valley of the Sun Jewish Community Center, we're going to have a panel, and our focus is on skin cancer and really talking about some of the elements that we're going to talk about today. So. When you get a chance, if you're interested in this at all, go to VOS, and that's V as in Victor, Valley of the Sun, VOSJCC.org forward slash skin, and sign up for this great symposium that we're going to have on the air. And it's free, just so you know. Um, I want to toss it over to now Andrew. Um, Tell me a little bit about what you guys are actually seeing. I know from a prevention standpoint, you bring up some great points, Dustin. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, the middle of the day, if you can't see your shadow, it's the worst, and it's covering up. Um, but I, yeah, I, are you seeing skin cancers in older adults, young adults, children? What are you seeing out there? So, and that's a great question. Um, so, in in general, we see a lot of skin rashes, psoriasis, and whatnot. But because we're in Arizona here we see a ton of skin cancer. So 
we see melanomas, uh, non-melanoma skin cancers. Just to give you an idea of numbers, I mean, we are seeing about a melanoma a day, if not every other day. Um, non-melanoma skin cancer is even more common. Um, who's getting these things? So, yeah, you're more likely to get these things as you get older, you have more cumulative sun exposure, um, but that does not necessitate you know, your skin cancer. You do not have to be um, over the age of 30, 40, 50, 60 to get skin cancers. We have younger people than that getting melanomas. Um, and if you've been living in a high UVA, uh, UVB index for a while, like born and raised in Arizona, you are more likely to get a skin cancer in your younger ages, like 20 years old, even 30 years old. It's not uncommon. So what are the things we could do to prevent? You talked about clothing, Dustin. You also talked about uh, SPF. Absolutely. Now, now I do know, and, and I've learned this, that beyond SPF 30, the difference is very marginal. So 30, I mean, some people are out there with SPF 50, SPF 100, and, you know, this stuff costs a lot of money. Yes, it does. But, but 30 should be more than adequate, right? That's a good point that you make. And we're, to tell you the truth, we're still learning in regards to what's the most optimal SPF level. We know what the minimum must be to prevent skin cancer, and that's an SPF of 30. However, we do not know if we go beyond SPF 50 if really there's any benefit. SPF 50 or greater than SPF 50, I should say, we believe has potential harmful effects beyond the benefit that we're receiving from the skin cancer prevention with that SPF level. So in general, we recommend between an SPF 30 and 50. I always recommend um, purchasing the one that's going to be the, the friendliest to the, the piggy bank, so to speak. And I like to use things such as Neutrogena products, which tend to run a little bit more cost-friendly. But you're right, they can be very expensive. And we keep that in mind with any of our recommendations for our patients. But uh, there are some uh, tremendously uh, good uh, and affordable options that are out there in the SPF 30 to 50 range. Above that, we tend to stay away from recommending that due to the potential harmful effects that it may cause. Right. No, that, that's good to know. So from a frequency standpoint, I mean, how common is skin cancer here good, in Arizona? Good question. So in Arizona, melanoma in 2017, we had roughly 2,000. Uh, 150 diagnoses of melanoma. That's not including the pre-melanoma, or melanoma in situ, we'll call it. Um, and those numbers, I would guesstimate, are in the ranges of 4,000. So we are seeing a significant amount. Yes. And, and how bad is melanoma? Because so, I, I hear some horrible things about melanoma. To give melanomas. you an idea, breast cancer, I, th I think we had around 5,000 diagnoses last year in Arizona. So melanoma is right behind it in terms of the number of people being diagnosed with it. And the difficulty with melanoma is a lot of times this is a pigmented lesion, or it could be apigmented without any pigment in it. It could be pink, but typically it's dark black, multiple, uh, multiple colors, a little brown in it, and it will be irregular bordered, and it will be growing or just look different than their typical mole. But it can occur on a location that's not exposed to the sun. So we do see some sun-related uh, mutations in the DNA and the genetic material of that melanoma when we sample it. However, there are some mutations that are just by random error, uh, just a, a heritable defect that puts them at risk. It could be size of the mole that they were born with. If it's greater than 2 centimeters, it's going to be at a greater risk just in its size alone. If they have over 100 nevi or moles, that's going to place them at a greater risk just by probability. But these things can occur on the butt and the back, the thighs. Areas on your that, foot, too. Oh, absolutely. Less than 5% do occur on the, the palmar plantar and under the nails. Uh, generally, that's going to be in your uh, uh, more pigmented individuals, so we, we tend to place them in skin Fitzpatrick type, so olive toned and greater, uh, but that's still very rare. And the difficulty with those uh, in general are we don't make the diagnosis till late because these pigmented lesions, like Bob Marley, he's a classic example, he thought he had an injury from soccer uh, on his big toe. That was an old soccer injury. He actually died from melanoma. What? Wow. Did Absolutely. not know that. Absolutely. There's a little food for our thought. So so we're talking about melanoma, and we're getting ready to round down our first segment. Mm -hmm. All right. So you bring up Bob Marley. Yeah. So I, I want to talk about skin color. I mm -hmm. mean, you know, you know, lily white, Caucasian versus African-American or Perfect. Islander. I you like know, where you're going with br this. Brown skin. Um, yep. You know, 
Is, is there susceptibility? Redheads in Scottsdale, Arizona, are at 13 times greater risk of melanoma than the average person. So 13 times. 13 wow. times greater risk of melanoma if you're a redhead. Wow. Freckles, uh, blue hair, or, uh, blue eyes, blonde hair. Uh, you got a family history. These are all going to place your risk even greater. The risk for the general uh, individual in the population is one out of four will have a skin cancer in their lifetime. But if you have those risk factors, then it's going to place you into a greater risk. All right, so we're getting taken out by, I believe, a little Led Zeppelin. Thank you, Wes. I appreciate it. Uh, I want to talk a little bit more about who is susceptible to this. You've been listening to Health Futures, taking stock in you. We're talking about skin cancer. I've got Dr. Andrew Newman here, and Dr. Dustin Mullins will be right back. Now back to Health Futures, taking stock in you. If you have questions about your own or your loved one's future health care, call 602-264-8009. Now, here's your host, Cypress Home Care Solutions, Bob Roth. Welcome back. You're listening to Health Futures. I'm your host, Bob Roth. We're on our second segment, so if you missed our first segment, go up to cypresshomecare.com. On the top, you'll see a media button. Click on that, and the third button down will lead you to the radio shows. We've been on the air for now in our fifth year. We've done about 200 shows, and you'll be able to hear, hear this first segment and obviously the rest of our show. So I only got these two doctors here with me for this last segment. So uh, Dr. Mullins and Dr. Um, Dr. Newman, I want to talk to you more about how to prevent this. And I think what I know, what little bit I know, is – Screening, right? It's full body screening. So tell me about when you should be doing this. Uh, how do you do this? Right. So screening is essential. Um, by screening your skin, we're not going to be uh, preventing those skin cancers from occurring. What we will be doing is catching them early if you do have one. That is essential. If we catch them early, we can take them out. We can um, essentially... Um, get rid of this opportunity for these skin cancers to become something more than you want them to be. They are very dangerous when they get aggressive and grow deeper into your skin. We get them early, boom, we're out, good, don't have to worry. And that's key. So screening is key. Come on in at any age. It doesn't matter if you're five. It doesn't matter if you're 67. We have kids coming in. We have adults coming in, teenagers coming in. Um, and it's important because everyone can get skin cancer. There's no age requirement. Um, I kind of, I kind of, I'll, I'll piggyback on top of that. So, with what Dr. Newman was saying there, where we tend to catch skin cancers at an earlier stage if they're coming in for their, you know, yearly or semi-annually full body. When we see somebody that doesn't have a skin cancer, well, what would be the benefit of doing a screening? It allows us to have the opportunity to kind of assess their skin behavior habits, what we're seeing in terms of their sun uh, exposure from what we're seeing on exam. Sometimes we're seeing some signs and evidence of significant sun exposure, and we may know that to be able to place them in a higher risk uh, category, and we need to give them some good education. Education is so key in terms of prevention and changing the behavior of the, the patient. Absolutely. So I think that's where the, the true benefit comes in, not only making sure that there's nothing there that needs to be addressed, but also giving them education to be able to go out there and prevent these skin cancers from occurring or being less likely to occur down the road. And it's, it's interesting because you said at the end of the first segment, you know, the population typically one in four, so 25% are going to have some type of skin cancer. And we mm -hmm. know that people that are redheads and have lots of freckles, yeah. 13 times more likely to have some type of skin cancer issue. So, you know, screening is vital if you fit in that demographic. You know, I, I haven't really talked about your practice. It's called Affiliated Dermatology. And if you want to learn more about it, go to AFF, and that's Frank Frank, Alpha Frank Frank Derm.com. And you guys have six locations over here in the Valley, and every one of those you could do screening right. in, right? Mm -hmm. we, exactly. We have a strong community impact and, and involvement uh, with our groups. We're very skin cancer driven in terms of what our specialization in terms of the providers within the group uh, like to treat and manage. 
but we do also have the founder of the Arizona Skin Cancer Foundation in our group as well. Wow. So we truly, from the top down, have the mindset and the uh, interest to really aggressively uh, manage and treat skin cancer and try to really educate our community with uh, involvement in school systems, uh, community events, doing these screenings as a way of showing that we care about the community. We want them to have the, the best skin. We want them to enjoy the sun, but do it appropriately and uh, with uh, good protection habits. You know, talking about screening, and, and I talked about it the first segment, we have a big event happening next week. It's on Wednesday, April 25th from 1 to 2.30 at the Valley of the Sun JCC. That's over there on North Scottsdale Road, 12701 North Scottsdale Road. If you want to sign up, it's vosjcc.org. That's Valley of the Sun, jcc.org, vosjcc.org, forward slash skin, or call them at 480-481-7024. It's a free event, and I understand that you guys are going to be doing free screening right there, That's too. right, completely free. We're going to be looking at the the skin that's exposed. We're not going to be taking off your shirt and pants, so don't feel afraid of anything like that. You're going to be... Get well, your what if, what like if you want to take off your shirt, pants? <laughs> <laughs> you know what they say? Don't they say get naked fifteen minutes a day in the sun? Right? So exactly we're, right. We're we're going to do it the JCC. No, I'm, not, I'm just kidding. But you'll do a uh, you'll do a free screening. So if somebody has mm-hmm. something that looks maybe abnormal on their neck, on their head, on their face, on their arm or foot, they they can share that with you. Exactly. Yeah. No, I, I that that is awesome. Again, that's at the Valley of Sun JCC. Um, and you can call 480-481-7024. And to learn more about affiliated dermatology, I gave out their website, but you can call them at 480-556-0446. So really talking about health. And, you know, one of the things that I got a chance to talk to you, Dustin, and you, Andrew, beforehand, I, I told you about a friend that had some surgery. And, you know, what's interesting was one of the things that I just share with you that I had a little bit of knowledge on is that, so much is dependent upon the person in terms of how they heal from the surgery. But one of the things you did share with me, and Andrew, I think it was you, saying that if you're a smoker, mm-hmm. um, that you know that could pose even more problems for healing. And certainly, you know, I have a lot of doctors here on the show, and you know, we always talk about eating right, you know, exercise, getting sleep. I think, and I, I could be wrong on this. I think that all is the same thing for skin health, correct? Oh, for sure, yeah. So, I mean, your overall health from mind down is going to affect your skin. If you are stressed out, your psoriasis will flare. If you have a car accident, you can actually get some eczema flare. Um, If you are smoking, you can have worse outcomes with surgery. Um, Your habits affect your skin. Your mind affects your skin. And I think that's great that you brought that up because I think we're so focused on organs you know, and only this tissue is going to affect this tissue in itself. But doctors are now starting to look at everything on a whole. And I think we're starting to really appreciate that. And that's good that you bring that up. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, I, I, I just noticed, Andrew, you just finished your second bottle of water. So water is got to be a very vital part to the skin. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, if you're dehydrated, your skin's going to be dehydrated. You're going to be dry. This is the desert. Right. I mean, this is a place for lizards. <laughs> uh, and, and used to be a place for dinosaurs exactly <laughs> right so if you want to fit in with them um you know don't drink your water but otherwise you know get your uh get your water going you know as we wrap up the show i i want to be able to at least give you guys the opportunity to share some final thoughts before we bring dr patel on um final final thoughts andrew you know what is what what are your you know what is your message to our listening audience as it relates to skin health and preventing skin cancer? I mean, I, I think a really important thing is that most of our patients they come into our office with one concern, but we actually are concerned about something else, and that's something to have been said because there are things that you may not know are on you that need to be addressed, and so please do take it seriously. Um, there is Im- importance to looking at your skin and come on in and we are so happy to take care of you and look at your skin. So it's not, a, there's not a whole lot involved. It's eyes and it's simple and looking. How about you, uh, Dustin? Absolutely. I think the biggest thing I could always recommend, uh, people out there that are listening that haven't seen a dermatologist or it's been a long time, um, 
don't be afraid to go in and see a dermatologist. If, if you have a lot of sun exposure, you have a big suntan, don't be afraid to come in. You're a patient that we want to see. We can help you. We understand that you're going to be outside and active. We, we want people to be active and enjoy the outdoors. We will manage your skin. Come in the door. We'll take excellent care of you. Prevention, protection, and early, early detection is really, really important. Mm-hmm. Again, I'm going to plug this event, JCC, Friday or Wednesday, April 25th from 1 to 2.30. It's free. You get free screening. Call 480-481-7024. It's halftime here at Health Futures. Thank you, Dr. Mullins. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Newman, Thank for you, joining Bob. me today. Make, make it a great day, guys. Now back to Health Futures, taking stock in you. If you have questions about your own or your loved one's future health care, call 602-264-8009. Now, here's your host, Cypress Home Care Solutions, Bob Roth. Welcome back. You're listening to Health Futures. I'm your host, Bob Roth, and we are on our third segment. Uh, If you missed the first two segments, you can catch them right up on our website at cypresshomecare.com. Click on the media button and then hit the drop-down arrow, and the third button down is radio show. You can catch this show and about 200 others that we've been bringing to you now for five years. So we just heard from Dr. Andrew Newman and Dr. Dustin Mullins. Um, they just really gave us a great landscape in the first and second segment as to the types of skin cancers that are out there, uh, how are they detected, how are they treated, and it was great hearing from them. And now I have a new person here in the studio with me. I've got Dr. Anushka Patel, Mm -hmm. and she's a radiation oncologist, and we're really here to talk about radiation therapy for treatment now for skin cancers. So, Dr. Patel, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. It's good to have you. And, uh, you know, one of the things I want to make sure our listening audience knows this, uh, we talked a little bit about in the first and second segment, is we have an event that's coming Mm -hmm. up, and it's on Wednesday of next week, April 25th. Mm -hmm. It's from 1 to 2.30 at the Valley of the Sun JCC. That's at 12701 North Scottsdale Road. And if you want to register for that, call 480-481-7024. Or go out to V as in Victor, O as in Oscar, S as in Sam, jcc.org forward slash skin. It is a free event. And guess what? They're going to do free screening there as well. So please call or email so that you can make sure you attend this great event. Yeah, it'll be a, it'll be a great uh, speaking event followed by the screening. And, and the other great thing about it is we've done a couple of these events. It'll be a good interactive event. So if you want to come and you've got some questions, we've got Dr. Mullins, we've got Dr. Newman, and we've got Dr. Patel. It sounds like a great big medical practice <laughs> there. But we're talking about skin, and skin yeah. is the largest organ in the body mm-hmm. or on the body or part of the human body. And... You know, I want to talk about radiation um, oncology, and specifically, you know, there's, you know, I guess my question is, is what role does radiation therapy play in skin cancer? So I'm, I'm making the assumption we're not talking about cutting somebody. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so radiation can be used as a curative modality for skin cancers, but it also has been used adjuvantly. So if someone had surgery and they had some high-risk features that increased their risk of a recurrence, such as perineural invasion, uh, those patients may need radiation after surgery. But radiation can certainly be used as a definitive treatment uh, without surgery, and it is a curative treatment. It's a curative treatment. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm assuming that it's localized. It's right there mm-hmm. on the skin tumor or, or skin, uh, you know, area area that, yeah. it, that is. So we're able to treat. We just basically focus on the skin lesion itself. We usually mm-hmm. give a, a decent margin, and we'll talk about different techniques later. Um, but it is a curative modality, so you'll see the, the tumor regress with time, and we can treat all sizes and all locations as well. Um, and there is no downtime. There is no surgery 
uh, no cuts, no needles. Um, so basically, it's just treatment every day, depending on the regimen. And right. you just come in, and you'll see the lesion regress with time. And, you know, we talked about this in the first and second segment. I mean, these lesions can be anywhere on the mm-hmm. body. I mean, most people think about the the yeah. nose, and they think about the ears. Yeah. They think about the forehead. But, you but know, you, I, I think it was Dr. Mullins talked about you, you can get them on, like, your foot. Yeah, you can get them pretty much anywhere. Of course, of course, sun-exposed areas are the most common for right. squamous cell and basal cell. Um, but you generally can get them pretty much anywhere. And specifically, radiation is well utilized for the face and lower extremities where surgery would be difficult or you're worried about the cosmetic out- outcome, radiation obviously does a good job with that. Well, and it's certainly you heal a lot better than mm-hmm. you do with a surgery. Yeah, it's a it's a slower process as surgery is a one-time procedure. It takes a while to heal. Ours is slowly over time, so we're able, the skin has the ability to regenerate, and then it, within two weeks of finishing treatment, your skin's completely healed. So obviously, depending on the lesion, mm-hmm. the treatment protocol is very different, but from a timing perspective, is there like an average that you really look at in terms of you know how often you need to go in for radiation yeah so there's different regimens um, and different techniques but the most common depending on the size is using superficial radiation called electrons and then based on the size you can either have a three-week regimen four-week regimen or even up to a six-week regimen if it's really large we may you know spread it out every day monday through friday 10 minutes a day for six weeks Um, but if the lesion's small enough we can even uh, get it done in three weeks. The other option is called brachytherapy, and that's an app- I've heard of that. Yeah, it's an applicator-based treatment, and uh, that works really well for lesions under two centimeters. And there, we can treat the lesion every other day. So we we do have a twelve fraction regimen, so the patient isn't coming in every you know every day if right. that's inconvenient. But the brachytherapy, it's mm-hmm. it's rather new. It's 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 been around. Um, we do have good applicators now uh, with different dose distributions, mm-hmm. and then we have other ways to treat you know rounded surfaces where we can make a mold and it'll be a mold to the patient's hand, let's say, um, and that way we can treat with a radioactive source with iridium one ninety two, and we're able to achieve the dose distribution we want. And that typically can be done, again, in different fractionations, but every other day is a common regimen. It's very convenient for patients. So we're, we're talking, or we're already knee-deep into some techniques. Mm-hmm. So, so give, me, give me an idea of uh, some of the techniques that you are you're using, your practice is using, and what is being used in medicine today? Yeah, so the most common is, you know, with the, the big linear accelerator, uh, we use superficial radiation called electrons, and one of the biggest questions is, are we treating deep and we don't want to treat deep so with electrons you're able to treat the skin and it doesn't penetrate too far deep Um, and that works pretty that works really well and we're able to bring the dose up to the skin by using a bolus like material It's it's a tissue equivalent material to make sure the skin gets dosed that's what we want um, so that's a really common technique, and we can use it on various parts of the body, especially large lesions on the scalp. And especially if, if someone's really worried about cosmetic outcome and we want to fractionate and treat multiple treatments, that is a good way to treat like lesions on the nose or even near the eye. So when you talk about bolus, it, does mm-hmm. that mean like you inject something? to put the, No, it's actually like a tissue equivalent material that we put on top of the skin and it ensures it. a dose gets to the skin because we really want the skin to get 100% of the dose. No, nice. Yeah. And then we're able, the good thing about electrons, there's no worry about the depth of the lesion. So we're going to be able to treat plenty of depth. So there's no concerns in that regards. And when you talk about depth, I mean, you know, when when you see something on the surface of the skin, it it can go much deeper. It could go much deeper. Most lesions are going to be less than three millimeters. um, But if there's a question, and we've seen rather large lesions that haven't been, that have been sitting there for a while, we'll actually get a CT scan and measure the depth. And make sure the energy we deliver is going to be able to target the whole lesion. Nice. And so you just gave us one type okay. of mm-hmm. delivery delivery system or delivery technique. What else? The other option is the HDR brachytherapy. Um, that's where we're able to deliver radiation with a radioactive source. And the source will come in and treat the area through an applicator. And typically we have two different applicators, a Valencia and a Leipzig applicator. And those work really well for lesions under two centimeters. And and with that, we're able to go to a higher dose per fraction so we can reduce the number of treatments the patient has to go under since it's such a small area. And for our listening audience, what does that applicator look like? Um, it actually, it's 
it's a round applicator with a stick at the end. It's almost okay. like a lollipop. It, it's <laughs> Half all a lollipop. It is. Um, that's all it is. So that works uh, really. That's actually one of our most popular techniques. Uh, the other technique is a Freiburg flap where we can make a mold if, let's say, we're treating a curved surface because most of our skin treatments need a flat surface. Right. And most surfaces are flat, except when you have, like, we had a lesion on the hand where it's very rounded. We were able to make a mold that conforms to the hand and then we're able to use that same radioactive source to come in and treat the various parts. So that allows us to give us an option for surfaces that aren't quite so flat. Got it. Got it. So you've described three different yeah, techniques. Yeah, so basically three is probably the main option. Fantastic. Fantastic. And, you know, I know we're getting ready to wind down our third segment, mm-hmm. but what is the advantage of one technique over the other? I mean, you yeah. described some of them, but if you, if our sure. listening audience was going to walk away from this, what would you say the advantages are? Probably the just three? the number of treatments. We can we can narrow down those number of treatments with the, with the, with the HDR brachytherapy. Um, but otherwise, in general, you're going to get you're going to achieve the same result. The outcome's still mm-hmm. the same, exactly. And uh, you you've been doing this for some time, haven't yeah. you? Yeah, I've been practicing out of residency for nine years. For nine yeah. years, and if I remember hearing you correctly, uh, you trained with Dr. Mullins at Henry I, Ford Hospital. No, or? I didn't train with him, but he actually uh, rotated with me. He rotated yeah, with you. Yeah, because he was a you know work, is a resident. Um, so we got to work together just actually a t- couple months ago. <laughs> wow, that, that's fantastic. I, you know what? I, when we come back, I want to talk about some of the acute and long-term effects mm-hmm. of this type of mm-hmm. therapy uh, or treatment, if you would. And then I also want to talk about cosmetic mm-hmm. outcomes. You've been listening to Health Futures Taking Stock in You. I've got Dr. Patel here in the studio. She's a radiation oncologist, and we're actually getting ready to promo this big event that's coming up next Wednesday at the Valley of the Sun JCC. It's the Focus on Skin Cancer. I've got a great panel of experts, one of them right here, Dr. Patel, and the ones that were here for the first two segments, Dr. Mullins and Dr. Newman. And that is on Wednesday, April 25th at the Valley of the Sun JCC from 1 to 2.30. Mm-hmm. We're going to take a break now. Hang in there. We'll be right back. Now back to Health Futures, taking stock in you. If you have questions about your own or your loved one's future health care, call 602 602- 2648009 Now, here's your host, Cypress Home Care Solutions, Bob Roth. Good afternoon. You're listening to Health Futures. I'm your host, Bob Roth, and if you just happen to be tuning in right now, we are on our fourth segment. And we're talking skin cancer. And if you're just tuning in, we're promoing this great event that's coming up on Wednesday. It's at the Valley of the Sun JCC. They're located at 12701 North Scottsdale Road, Wednesday the 25th from 1 to 2.30. I've got Dr. Mullins, i got Dr. Newman, and here in the studio right now I've got Dr. Patel. The three of them are part of our expert panel. We're going to have a discussion with them about skin, skin cancer, prevention, treatment. The seminar or the session is free, and we also have free skin screening. So come on by. If you want to make an appointment to be there, 480-481-7024 or go to the Valley of the Sun JCC website, and that's V as in Victor, O as in Oscar, S as in Sun, jcc.org forward slash skin. So, Dr. Patel, you mentioned that you did some rotations at Henry mm-hmm. Ford. Yeah, I, tra- I did my residency training at Henry Ford in Michigan. Yep. Um, and I, you know, it was a very enjoyable, very good clinical practice. Learned as much as I can. Uh, but I went into radiation oncology uh, specifically because I wanted to work with cancer patients sure. while using CT based planning, which we use image based planning to do all the treatment. So it's a great combination. Well, it sounds like a great combination. And I'm imagining that you're not just restricted to just skin mm-hmm. cancer. It's radiation oncology across the board. board. Yeah, so we treat anywhere, head and neck, GI, colorectal, um, lung, breast, and in fact, a lot of breast radiation, including brachytherapy, which that's you know a similar technique to what we're doing for skin. Uh, but yeah, any site, uh, most sites do need radiation, so but pretty much it. 
it, able it, to do it all. It is amazing how far we mm -hmm. have come with technology. It is. It's really changed the whole field. It's amazing. From onboard imaging to being able to really focus your beam at targeting a small lesion in the lung, it's, it's quite amazing. And the toxicities have minimized because of that. Right, and, and that's, that's the piece that mm -hmm. I think is amazing is that we're able to get right to the finite millimeter, you know, if there's anything less than that, the nano space, <laughs> if you would, to, to precisely eradicate that cancer through radiation treatment. Yeah, it's, it's completely changed. And when I started training, much of that had changed. But even prior to that, um, you know, the toxicities have greatly been reduced and we're able to treat, you know, uh, anything with less number of fractions because we're able to treat such a small area. No, that's, that is amazing. Mm -hmm. So we're talking skin cancer mm -hmm. on this show, and you gave us three defined ways of getting treatment, the different techniques. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, you did share, you know, what the differences were and, and why you might prefer one versus the other, but all three of them accomplished mm -hmm. the same goal, which is really important. You know, I wanted to ask you this, this question is, and what are, what are you know, I'm thinking about it, what are some of the acute and long-term effects of this type of treatment? Obviously, radiation is, is something that's foreign to your body. So what, what are some of the things that patients can expect from something like so, this? So, yeah, the most common is, you know, we're obviously targeting the skin, so you're going to get skin redness. Um, the lesion itself may have a little bit of breakdown. Um, we, we manage that pretty well with just topical lotions. The only systemic effect of radiation for skin cancer is fatigue. So patients do get tired, especially if we have more number of treatments, um, and that's been well known. Uh, so if, that's usually the acute side effects. Long term, you could get, the skin can get a little hypopigmented and scarred down. So radiation, think of radiation like surgery, we do cause scarring. Mm -hmm. um, and then unusually, it's very rare, but you could get telangiectasias where the blood vessels surface to the skin um, right. And oftentimes you see that, uh, you know, in, in the in older, older adults. Yeah, older yeah. adults. That can happen in the area of the radiation. So if you if we want to minimize that, that's where you want to go spread the treatment out so, there, so that there's less late toxicity. Interesting. And, and certainly when you're undergoing treatment, uh, you should stay out of the sun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That goes without saying. But if you have skin cancer, yeah, any sun protection you can do. And I think the best protection is a hat, shade, um, just, you know, not having exposure. Right. You're not even messing with the SPFs. I just... think, I mean, it's definitely useful, but I think, you know, if you really want to be cautious. But if, if you can't have the, you know, avoid the exposure, then definitely SPF is important. Well, I, I imagine one of the side effects is not glowing. I know a lot of people wonder, you know, <laughs> am I going to glow that. at night? You know, <laughs> I'm going to get all these doses of radiation. But not enough. And they're just such a small area that there's no glowing. No, good. Okay. Good, good, good. But, but interesting enough, I mean, some of the long-term effects, like you said, the blood vessels may rise. Mm. You may have a, a, a different color, colorization of the pigment. Um, would it would it look more like a maybe an old age spot or something? Yeah, it could it, slight little pigmentation, hypopigmentation, Hype, typically. Right, right, yeah, right. Um, but yeah, it could be, and it, it's very localized to the area that was treated. But that doesn't always happen. Some of it depends on the healing of the how, and the age of the person, and how they heal, um, and also how how it was fractionated. Like I said, the most the more number of fractions you give and give the low dose per day, the less risk of that happening you know the more doctors i talk to especially surgeons and i've had plastic surgeons mm -hmm. on and others so much is dependent upon how the patient heals themselves yeah, it's pretty amazing and, and 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 you know i would imagine especially you know you know with with skin you know if you're eating a healthy diet you're not smoking and you're drinking a lot of water all of that probably it's, promotes it's going to help yeah you know as we wind up i know we have less than a minute what or how is the cosmetic outcome with radiation therapy? So that is, I think that's one of the most favorable things for radiation is the cosmetic outcomes. Amazing. We don't have any scarring. Um, and pretty much your skin's going to go back to the way it looked. You may have that late toxicity we talked about later on, mm -hmm. but, you know, acutely um, and within even years after the skin's going to go back to what it was. So there's no deformity. Uh, and I think that's one of the highlights of radiation. So if you would like to get a hold of Dr. Patel, you can go to ArizonaCCC.com or call 480-278-8300. Ask for the scheduler for Dr. Anushka Patel, and you can get in to see her. And we're also promoting this big event next Wednesday, the Valley of Sun JCC. 
We've got Dr. Patel, Newman, and Mullins there. We got a panel of experts talking about skin cancer. It's free, and you get free screening if you would like that. And that's April 25th, 1 to 2.30 next Wednesday. Call 480-481-7024 or go to vosjcc.org forward slash skin. Dr. Patel, thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you very much. Make it a great day. Have a great weekend and be back next week for another episode of Health Futures. Thank you. There's no place like home. You've been listening to Bob Roth's Health Futures. If you have questions about your own or your loved one's future health care, Call Cypress Home Care Solutions at 602-264-8009. That's 602-264-8009. Or visit cypresshomecare.com. Be sure to join Health Futures with Bob Roth every Friday at noon, right here on Money Radio 1510 and 105.3 FM.